Hi, and welcome to another video from visionmaths.com. In this video, we'll be looking at vectors and scalars. So what is a vector? A vector is a distance or direction travelled between the two points. Here, we see an example triangle with points A, B and C clearly labelled, with a line marked with an arrow to show the direction of travel. So, what we're going to do here is figure out the distance travelled between point A and point C. We write vectors in columns, and like any graph reading, x will be the first information we'll be looking for. Then we look for the y coordinate, which is the vertical line. Here we see point A to point C is three squares or units along to the right, so we write our three, and then we count how many upward squares to reach point C. This gives us five, and let's not forget our brackets. We can also write this A to C example as an AC with a small arrow above to show the direction of travel using vectors. We'll make ourselves an example line A and B. We'll start with our first line A, we'll begin it in a random place on our grid, for this example we'll use 2, 4, and find another point at gradient 5, 9. We can see without even using our coordinates and simply counting the squares that the second point is 3 squares to the right and 5 up, so we'll write 3 over 5 and remember to add our brackets. To make our example B line, we'll take another random point in this example 4, 8, and downward to 7, 4. Again, we can work it out using the coordinates, but we could also just as easily count, and here we see the gradient goes right 3, so our x is 3, and our first to second points go down 4. Because it's going down, we'll place a minus before the 4 as our y, so we get 3 over minus 4 as our b vector. So moving on to our first example, we'll start by placing a first line a connecting with b. As the line b follows a with the arrow pointing away, we'll say that this is A plus B. What we want to do now is work out the direction of travel from our starting point A to our ending point of B. We can do this by drawing a line from the origin to the end point and we'll label that line as A plus B as that's what we're trying to work out. As we know our vectors for lines A and B, we can write this out as an equation with our columns that we already know and add the plus sign between the two. Now like our original lines, we can simply count the squares to make up our new vector. So first, looking for our x, counting across, we can see the point moves six spaces. Being careful to check with which direction the arrow is moving in, we can see that it goes up one square, which gives us a y of one. Let's see if we're correct by working with the numbers rather than the line we have. As we see here, three plus three makes six, so our x is correct. And five plus minus four is the same as taking four, so we get the answer 1, which is again correct to the squares we counted. Now what if we are to be working with a minus b? Using our same example a and b lines of 3 over 5 and 3 over minus 4, we'll work it out using just the numbers this time. So 3 take 3 is 0, and 5 take away the minus 4 makes 9. To prove we're correct, we can simply draw the line we're trying to work out and count the distance in squares again. We can see that indeed the start to end point does not move horizontally in either direction across the x-axis, so our x is 0, and if we count from our origin of a to the origin of b to complete the triangle, we notice that like our numbers told us in the beginning, the points are indeed 9 squares away from each other, so that's also correct. Let's introduce a scalar. A scalar is what it sounds like. It's a number we can change the length of a line with without necessarily being in the units the vector works in. In this example, we'll use a and times it by a scalar of 2. 2 gives us no useful information with regards to how long or in what direction the point will move on the grid. We need to use our vector for that. However, 2 will double the size of the vector. If we write out our vector a as 3 over 5, then timesing it by 2 will double both figures, giving us 6 and 10. With our original a vector drawn out, we can continue using our ruler in the same gradient as vectors don't actually change angle. If we go over it in green using our two endpoints on the ruler, we can see that in fact we have doubled the distance travelled by the original vector and that our numbers do work. In our next example, we'll use a scalar of a half with our example b vector. So, if we know our example b is 3 over minus 4, then we just simply divide the 2, giving us 1.5 over minus 2. If we start at the origin of b, we can move along the x-axis, one and a half units, and mark that point, and from that point we can again travel down our y-axis two units, and mark this second spot. As we stated before, the scalars don't change the gradient of the line, but just the size of it. We'll draw a triangle here using those translations, and our connecting line should be half that of the original b line. 
Now the ruler I use is not nearly as accurate as a ruler you'd be using in real life, but if we look at its center points, we see that they do in fact line up with the center of the original B line. In our final example, we use a combination of the problems we've worked with before and work out 2B minus half A. To get those extra working out marks and to make it easier for yourself, we'll write out our original B column, which we know is 3 over minus 4, with a scalar of 2, meaning times 2. If we do this, we arrive at 6 over minus 8, which simply doubles the B line length. Our scalar of half means that our original 3 over 5 for our A vector becomes 1.5 over 2.5. Remember to draw the B line first as the equation is B minus A and accordingly the arrows will again have to be aiming at each other. Having formed our lines let's complete the triangle by connecting the ends. We'll label this with our equation 2B minus a half A. We can write this out on the side too and we shouldn't forget to place our arrow in the right direction to show where the origin of the vector is to the end of the vector. If we measure the line as moving 4.5 units to the right, then the x coordinate is 4.5, and also we can see it goes down 10.5 units, which gives us our y unit of minus 10.5. Let's refer back to the equation to see if this makes sense. If we take 1.5 from 6, we get 4.5, and if we take 2.5 from minus 8, we get minus 10.5. So we can see that both our line and equation give us the same units. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to the channel for more maths videos or visit revisionmaths.com for more revision materials.